Hey guys, it's Rachel Castile and welcome to Typology Corner. Today I'm doing an overview video on the INFP personality type. Um, I'll be doing it from the perspective of objective personality. So I'm going to cover like the standard and the jumper type. Um, the standard is prioritizing the first and second. Our jumper is prioritizing the first and third function as saviors. So this is what it looks like. Um, the INFP's functions is introverted feeling to begin with and then extroverted intuition, introverted sensing, extroverted thinking, and uh, yeah, these being saviors for the standard and these being saviors for our jumper type. So um, <clears throat> so starting out, um, introverted feeling is the most dominant thing in the INFP. Um, it's kind of what they're focused on at any given moment. Their, you know, their life is really about defining the identity more and more. Uh, being more in touch with the self. So, and how they do that is through introverted feeling. Um, they are making sense of what matters to them. What do they personally believe? What, um, what do they value? Uh, what are their life priorities and being, um, being in tune with that and ordering their life around those decisions that they've made. Um, introverted feeling is a decider function. Um, it's knowing the self, defining the self. Um, so in terms of the four human needs, uh, they are identity first, which then leaves tribe as like the last human need that they're kind of checking in to meet. Um, so introverted feeling mixed with extroverted intuition is what colors the INFP, uh, dominantly, even in both types, but um, extroverted intuition is seeing abstract connections in everything around them, um, in, in their external engagement, as they are interacting with the world around them, uh, they are seeing the possibilities of everything. They're not really looking at the immediate information itself, but the possibilities that stems from the things that, um, excuse me, that they see. And this creates um, a very creative person. They are thinking outside of the box constantly and kind of exploring the different possibilities to define the identity even more. Um, extroverted intuition and introverted sensing and extroverted thinking are all kind of serving the purpose of FI as the dominant function. So, um, <clears throat> The INFP, as they go out and kind of try on different possibilities, different perspectives, um, kind of letting their mind, their imagination go, um, they can enjoy exploring and allowing that to inform the self and kind of defining the self from um, their life experiences that they walk through or that they um, kind of, it can be in their imagination too. So um Exploring the imagination for the sake of understanding the self more and more is kind of a very comfortable place for the INFP to be in. Um, introverted feeling. What else can I say about it being a dominant process? So um, they are just very attuned to um, what matters to them most and the most default, like, uh, way of being is to honor that, to live by it, to, um, stay true to self and to communicate that, uh, authentic, authentically, you know, authenticity is something that really matters to them. Um, sharing that, that really defined inner world, um, their emotional awareness about themselves, um, yeah, that, that personal conclusion that they've come to, um, and living in accordance with it, sharing it, um, communicating it in some way, uh, through the way that they live, it can show up in just the things that they have, uh, selected in their life, the way they, uh, decorate their home or the things that, you know, in being in touch with what they love, they want the things that they love in their life. And, um, it, you may see it in their decor or just, um, yeah, 
Also, the introverted sensing is there as a third function. So this is can be like things that they valued in the past too. Things that um, kind of nostalgic for them that can be there too. Kind of uh, the mixing of all of these functions, seeing them kind of work together. Um, what else can I say about that? So um, introverted feeling. Uh, with the extroverted intuition is very creative um, and imaginative. One example I like to think about is um, Tolkien and uh, C.S. Lewis, like Chronicles of Narnia, Lord of the Rings. When you think of them as writers, uh, they are said to be I INFPs, that they really created a world with all these different characters Um with elaborate storylines and all of this stuff that they, they share this depth of their inner world with us through their imagination. And, um, we love the worlds that they created. And that's something that kind of flows out of the INFP brain or wiring, um, that ex just looking at all the various possibilities and, uh, communicating, writing from that place. Um, Johnny Depp is said to be an INFP as well. Just looking at how he is as an actor, um, trying on all these different uh, characters and living through those characters is something that is appealing to an INFP. Um, getting to act and um, live through something that's very different than them it informs the self even more. So it's like this ever evolving exploration to define the self through, um, uh, through the imagination. Um, yeah. Um, what else can I say? Let's see. Um, introverted sensing. I'll kind of explore that a bit. I'm talking from the perspective of the standard type somewhat right now. Um, looking at FI, then the any and then si si kind of serving the exploration of ne could be um like the routines of life kind of like um it not being the most dominant thing but it's kind of there like their memory um that internal kind of recording of the things that they've gone through uh the things that they've experienced um but um still the extroverted intuition as a gathering process is still kind of leading them to continue to branch out to explore um, the things that they are um, kind of seeing in the world. This is still kind of an open type. The extroverted intuition keeps them moving about and looking for new things, um, experiencing new things, being open to the abstract things that they're seeing in life. And then introverted sensing is coming as a support after that exploration and organizing those things, the details retained from the things that they've uh, gone out and seen in the world in a sense. So introverted sensing is organizing what they've been through, organizing their life um, it could be, it is highly associated with life routines, with establishing routines for yourself, uh, taking care of your body, things like that. Um, this is something that is good growth for the INFP, or they have a tendency to really kind of uh, enjoy whenever they start to manage this area of their life. Um, getting good routines, uh, getting all the details in order in their life. Uh, remembering, um, kind of creating processes and systems for doing things in their life, which is routine in a sense. Uh, but that's one way that it manifests in the INFP. This is not like a dominant SI type or something, but just how it colors them a bit. Um, and then the biggest thing in their life is extroverted thinking being the last function, which is... Um, efficiency results with people getting things done, making things work for the tribe around them. Um, it's very opposite of the introverted feeling, uh, in the INFP, they're most in touch with, um, their own judgments, their own, 
uh, conclusions, their moral code, what feels authentic to them and staying true to that, living by that at all times, defining that more and more, spending time introspectively, um, making sense of their own value system. So extroverted thinking is a very different realm. Um, extroverted thinking is going outside of the self, seeing what's working for other people and adjusting to make things work better for them. That's what TE is about getting results for the collective, for the organization, for society, hearing what all of society's reasons is for something. And that's a very like polar opposite place for an INFP. And that can be kind of like limiting to them that, um, extroverted thinking can easily, um, be something that an INFP wants to shut out and not look at, or it can be annoying to them maybe for the tribe's reasons to come and kind of push on the FI and to not approve of the FI or something like that. Um, it can be painful or frustrating, uh, if they're really in opposition in a sense, but yeah, so it is a, it's a different way of living for sure to, uh, be in a TE sort of space. And this is the inferior process for the INFP. Um, but uh, growth is getting that feedback, allowing what you're creating to factor in the collective and um, to make what you're creating work for other people. Um, that's kind of the compromise between the first and the last function of finding a good balance. Um, yeah, it's not a natural state of being, but... Um, as an INFP, you can, you know, with checking in with what is true for you and staying true to, you know, what actually is valuable to you, um, you can be out of touch with the people around you and, um, you know, uh, can, it can be easy for you to create your life around your own values alone. And, uh, yeah, it just, it will be helpful in, in your growth overall, as you, you know, learn to connect with the tribe through making things work, being able to export your FI and kind of, uh, share it in a way that the tribe can process and finding that way to incorporate the tribe's reasons what is working for everybody else and it still work for your personal FI having that, uh, kind of balance is the life growth of the IP types is a uh, tribe at the bottom. So, um, yeah. So what else can I say? Let's see, let's get into personal growth for both types, the INFP, um, the INFP standard type, um, growth is paying attention a bit more to the body, the routines of life, their, uh, their personal, like, um, memory and what life has taught them from past life experiences and kind of extracting something out of it and honoring um, that organiz organization or taking time to organize their past experiences in their own mind and uh, to kind of let that guide them to um, our standard INFP is guided more by the exploration of the possibilities and, you know, their imagination and uh, looking at things from different points of view, different perspectives um, and SI is more the tried and true. It's the known information, the known details. So uh, growth for them is allowing those details to really uh, be incorporated and to be honored um, in a way that, you know, I'm trying to think of something practical, but it's just a part of life. The details, the routine, the creating um, a specific process in getting things done, um, is something that is easily overlooked when, uh, gathering is a, a, um, what word is, it? is a preference. So, um, yeah, kind of incorporating that is the other side of your personality. 
that will just also um, be beneficial for the holistic person that you are. So um, looking at the opposite for our jumper type, uh, what they're, um, I didn't actually detail what it looks like prior to growth. So just what the jumper INFP is like kind of all over the place a little bit here, but the jumper INFP, um, SI being prioritized is a more routine person. They are, um, really honoring what they have been through and processing how they personally feel about it and are allowing those two things to guide their life. Mainly this type is more, um, controlling of staying, staying congruent with the, their personal traditions of their own life. Um, the things that they deemed valuable, the things that they've deemed, um, as positive experiences in their life, this will be a more nostalgic version of the INFP. And, um, what else can I say about that? They're just more in tune with um, the order of things, the order of, um, what they've been through, they've learned from their past experience and the experiences that they're choosing going forward, uh, is based on honoring or staying congruent with the life lessons that was in the things that they've been through. So this in practice, it becomes a more controlled life as opposed to, you know, the, the standard type is moving about more open, wanting to experience things that, um, or explore abstract possibilities that, uh, they haven't already experienced or that isn't known to them. Um, this type is a bit more, um, controlled or more organized honoring the organization of their life, that internal organization and, uh, or kind of limiting what's coming in a bit more. Um, so growth for them is to actually explore the possibilities to look at things from different perspectives to, um, yeah, to follow the abstract thoughts, to allow their imagination to take them in different directions. Um, and that will inform the SI, the introverted sensing to, uh, to have even more detail from those new experiences. And this type is always going to be refining their detail more. They're going to be honoring, um, what they've walked through, honoring their past, honoring, um, the things they've retained in their memory, really their, uh, concrete details of life. Um, so the conceptual is going to just open that up more. And, uh, these two types, again, they're not going to become each other. Your saviors are still your saviors, but growing is incorporating the other two functions. Um, the thing that they have in common again, is that extroverted thinking inferior process. Um, in growth. So, um, just finding a way to work with the tribe, um, getting feedback in your life and keeping that a normal thing, then you won't have a big tidal wave in realizing like the big gap between the two. Um, yeah. So just some more positives on the INFP, their individuality, their creativity, um, is something that is so inspiring and, uh, like the pictures that they can create, the, the stories that they can tell, uh, the art that they create, it comes from a level of imagination that a lot of people don't have access to, or it's, it's something that they bring to the world that is so unique. Um, it comes from such an authentic place. It's, it's really an expression of who they are, but, um, their willingness or I, I don't even know if I call it willingness, but just, they are innately receiving creative understandings of everything. They're seeing between the lines, uh, 
what's there and what things can become the possibilities of uh, everything that they experience that level of exploration on such uh in a creative imaginative level um they become just very original kind of people and that's really beautiful um just display to the world what individ individuality really can look like and become because they're ever evolving um into a more authentic self um something else to mention uh they have a true depth of emotion in fi I'm kind of doing this off the cuff i don't have any notes but like um their FI is very deep in the sense of understanding the uh, variety of emotion or the different uh, different nuances of every given emotion. And um, they're very emotionally aware, aware of themselves, but also um, this is a very good counseling ability to, to counsel other people from their own self-awareness. They're able to kind of go there with other people, kind of access those uh, different states within themselves to um, understand other people. They value their individuality. So that's something that they are sensitive about in other people and want to honor that in other people. Um, yeah, they want that freedom to be themselves, uh, to discover the self, to, um, continue to be defining the self more and more. And they honor that process, that journey in other people. Um, they're a very unique type because of how they're wired. Um, they will continue to kind of not be defined by society's norms because they're challenging the norm. Um, in contrasting the two types, our jumper type, uh, will just have, they'll still have that element to them. Uh, They'll just be more guided by the personal life experience, I think is the best thing to contrast the two. Life experience will be informing them and will be honored. Uh, they will pull from life experience when communicating, when sharing, when teaching others from that all the more. Um, that will be something a bit stronger that will stay present in their um, communication or their way of life, it will be a bit harder for them to break from that. Um, so they'll evolve slightly differently, I guess is what I'm saying. A lot of the things I'm saying may apply to more of the standard type, but, um, the idea of growth overall is incorporating all sides of yourself and, um, evolving into the full person that you are acknowledging what you're overlooking but also cultivating the gifts that flows out of um that flows out of having you know the savers that you do have something else the more i'm just kind of mulling over it um being a si dom i mean not dom but savior type like our jumper type um will be they will probably create better systems of, of recording stuff and uh, just a more organized um, aspect to them. The memory of detail, the memory of... Um, I even think of like how Tolkien and C.S. Lewis wrote such detailed worlds. Like they literally built whole worlds with like extreme detail to each character. That is the S.I., of the imagination like they go together the imagination is the possibility of what something could become and then the si is the detail all of the traits of that character and writing it out um building an entire world has a lot of si in it the si details um combing through the details of the imagination they you know 
So from this, I'm just wanting to paint a picture of the whole self. Everybody has a tendency towards one or the other. So um, the more the detailed person allows their imagination to take them to new places, the more um, beautiful the detail that they write will be even more. Um, but this applies to everything. Like INFPs can be in so many different fields doing, creating totally different things. Um, but yeah, you're a beautiful gift to the world. Um, I'm glad to know a few INFPs in my life that I can think of right now. Um, they're just very creative, think outside of the box. Um, bold individualists is one way I can describe them. They, um, they're just blatantly who they are. And, um, I just encourage you to continue to express, um, what's authentic to you. Enjoy sharing that creativity and, um, creating beautiful things from that. Share it with the world and then, um, allow the world to give you feedback and see if it's working for other people and find ways to improve the efficiency, the execution of what you're doing so that others, uh, feedback is factored in and what you're doing gets better and better. Um, yeah. So, uh, that's it for the INFP today. I was a little bit all over the place, but, uh, we got there. Um, if any of these cognitive functions are still fuzzy to you, um, you can definitely go over to um, my YouTube channel, go to the playlist, go to cognitive functions. And in there, I've got a video on each of these functions, uh, just elaborating even more on what they are. And then you can see how they show up in your personality. Um, and if you'd like help determining your type, if still you're unsure what your type is, or you'd like coaching based on your type, um, you can visit my website, typologycorner.com and uh, book a coaching session, a typing session with me. And I'd love to help you come to uh, clarity on what your type is or just to grow um, in your own type journey. So uh, if you got value out of this, go and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate the feedback and just knowing that the video was impactful or helpful to you and uh, subscribe for future content. Uh, this is the last video of the uh, 16 slash 32 types, just starting out as an overview on all of the types. Uh, from here, I'm gonna get into the Enneagram and uh, yeah, just kind of see where the channel goes. But um, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Again, you can search through the channel for other content that I have. Um, it's starting to become a bit of a library of information for you guys. But, um, yeah, again, thank you for watching and I will see y'all on the next one.